Wayne, it's time to talk about the seventh round picks, man. You ready to do it? Yeah, man. Seventh heaven it is, baby. Let's get to it. What's going on, 49er Faithful? The BAM Show is in the building, baby. (laughs) It's your boy Breezy and Mike. What's going on, Mike? What's up, big dog, man? Listen, I'm out here having a great day, man. Uh, It's not been great, but it's going to be great by the time, you know, everything is out. So I'm I'm ready to get going, man. You looking good over there. What you doing? You on a rowing machine, man? You you doing some gym workouts? Well, it just hit me that, like, you know, the rowing machine is the motion of actually rowing and i I would probably fail at rowing because rowing sucks i mean it's back (laughs) well i mean just being on a row not a rowboat rowboat or don't they have the there's teams that's a yeah bro that's some power that that's some that's some strength it's but it's legs it's it's, back legs yeah tries the motion yeah but like just when I what, was doing why do you that, think I, they called it the rowing machine? I'm just I curious. I don't know, bro, because I haven't seen rowboating in a minute. So I've just been on the machines. <laughs> and so, like, I'll be doing all kind of rows, like, right? Like, <laughs> the landmine rows, the yeah, whatever. Yeah. But, nah, I'm feeling good, man. I'm in pain. I'm You're looking lie. good, bro. You're looking clean. I see the alligator on the shirt over there. I can't zoom in on you the way I want I to. Just, I wish I had the remote. So when Tiger's on my shirts and alligators. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> said, so you want to see the tag. I'll see you I'll later. I'll see you later. Right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing so, you though. So you know, you know, I wanted to show, get my Lacoste on. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Lacoste, even though they're not trying to sponsor brothers. Um, but yeah, I gotta get. We gotta get some Latigra shirts too, man. You know, we gotta find a way to bring mm. the French, the French back. You know what's funny? Back in the day, like when I was like seven or eight, these shirts were dirt cheap. I mean, like seven, eight dollars. Nobody knew what Latigra was or Lacoste. You know what I'm saying? And I remember getting them at like the secondhand stores. And now a t shirt is $69. Because somebody, I ain't going to mention no name drug dealers, blew these names up. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, but like, you know, mm. the, you know, the famous people started wearing it. Yeah, I don't know. But it, it's good to be here. And, and it's good to talk about seventh round picks. And, and here's my question for you and the faithful out there like, is Brock Purdy the savior? Of the seventh round. Well, that's going to depend on what you feel about some of these other guys and also the expectation of said seventh round players. So I think that when we're going through this list, we have to think about how deep this team has been, how deep the drafts were, and what we got out of these guys and what you expect to get out of someone in the seventh round. I mean, like, if if a team had 100 seventh round picks, Mm -hmm. I think that if – not even ten percent. Seven of them. I would say one yeah, percent. I, I would right. Yeah. I would think yeah. if seven of them made the team, it's probably a good percentage, right? Like yeah, out of a hundred, yeah, yeah, one percent, one percent, which would be what five, one, one, yeah, <laughs> one out of a hundred, one, no, it's yeah. one, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would so say five like, of them. So so right. for five percent, so yeah, mm-hmm. that that would be okay. Like mm-hmm. I would be cool with that, you know, especially um, when teams have multiple. Seventh round picks like at that at a certain point they're like yeah let's just go home bro like let's just let's just pick somebody and get out of here let me just be the first is I have zero expectations for seventh round picks right rightfully so zero rightfully so um, and people who get hype about them and like say oh this was good now there are there's some no instances. there's nobody in they right there is no one ever hyped about a seventh round pick I remember when I wanted Donovan West as a center. Oh no no two, that that's I, I mean ago. I don't, we didn't draft him in the seventh he just went undrafted but yeah I didn't mean it like him. that I meant more I no disrespect but I thought we were talking about like the Mel Kuypers and those type oh. of dudes like there's no one I felt would hype up a seventh round pick because these picks aren't even projects mm-hmm. these picks are what can they do as far as depth if they in you know 
And, and will they have a, a chance to try to make a roster? Now, look, so I, I feel like seventh round picks stands a little to have a chance because technically they're undrafted guys. There's just a seventh round. Right. So technically they're undrafted free agents, but because there's a seventh round in the NFL, these picks become draft picks. And so it helps out the formula because if you can, if these seventh round picks can do some things, you know, it can benefit you in the long run. Like we'll talk about a couple of these picks and how they've, they'll help out the 49ers so yeah look look zero expectations i'm cool with the one or five percent whatever <laughs> mm-hmm. uh if they make the roster but let's get right to it man we let's let's, let's, well, spin the wheel. let's, let's, let's get to some 49ers news really really quick uh okay. we, we got 20 25 minutes or so left of the show um the niners have brought in a couple of guys in workouts and since we're on seventh round picks i just wanted to know what you thought about some of these guys um trevin trevin wallace the linebacker from kentucky was one of the guys that they are bringing in for their uh, 30, uh, 30 for 30 workout. And then also another Kentucky guy in Malachi. Corley. Western Kentucky. So you got to be specific. Oh, this is Western. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. But I said Kentucky, though. No, nah, but it's a different Kentucky. school. Yeah, I know it's a different school, but isn't Western Kentucky? No, you're right. But uh, you meant school. And I, and, and I don't try gonna... to, don't tell me what I meant. Okay, you're right. Th- no, you're right. No, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> <what I meant. laughs> <laughs> but you're right. I can't tell you what you meant. I hate when people do that to me. And I will uh, never, ever do that to you. But I know you meant Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah. But look, two guys, I, th- I think Malachi, uh, Corley, uh, could be a day two pick. Um, day two, day three for Trevin Wallace. It all depends on how you look. How do you value his production at Kentucky over his his athleticism? And so, and his ability. And so, like, you know, Fred Warner was a day two pick. So when we say day two, we're talking second round, third round. I want people to understand that. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, when you look at Trevin Wallace, he has the ability to give you Fred Warner type production, uh, especially with the San Francisco 49ers. And I'm sure other teams are going to feel that way, too, because you're talking about an athletic, fast guy that can tackle, that can stop the run. And so Trevin Wallace, we've been talking about him, though. We've we mocked him a few times, and people, like, look past over him because that's not the linebacker that they like. And here he is on a 49ers top visit. Malachi bum, Corley bum, is your Debo bum. guy. Yeah, so that's oh. that's that's the Debo comp. Malachi Corley, like, is the kid that can line up in the backfield. So mm-hmm. is this the kind of move, let's mm. say, we flash forward, he's picked up in the third or fourth round, right? I, I, I don't think I don't think he's gonna future? last. I don't think he's gonna last round three. Uh, depending okay, cool. On, so we get him in a second. Fine. The, Let's the, say we the, get him in a second. If you talk about us, yes, but I feel like we'll have to go and 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 get him. I don't think he's gonna be available at sixty three. If he is on this roster, is Debo here in twenty twenty five, twenty twenty six? Yes. Then it, then it means he's not getting drafted. Then that's not true. Because because he has you other skill sets. You said he's a Debo type of He receiver. is, but Debo, you still Debo got one more year left on his contract, and I don't think the 49ers are going to they I don't I don't I think Debo still gives you value as much as people feel like Debo's declining. He's not really declining. He's who, just wait, not, who who believes that Debo's declining? Everybody. Like Debo has if, declined. If you are watching this right now Debo, and you Debo, think Debo Samuel is declining, please type declining Debo in the comments, please. Cuz I I want to know who I can put targets on. Yeah, cause I'm. I, I, but but here's the thing. Like, if you if you're talk, can I just say that if if Mike, the expectation of Debo doing what he did the year he earned his contract will never happen again. I I don't I don't I think that it's not that it was an anomaly, but we overutilized Debo Samuel. I don't think Christian McCaffrey is going to be as good as he was last year. This year. Because uh, we overutilized them <laughs> and we wore his behind out and look what ended up happening. Do you get what I'm trying to go with this? Like I'm I not- do. Brandon Brandon Ayuk wasn't as established as a as a as a runner. There was no rapport. That, that was there was no Brock Purdy. There was right? no. They, there's a there's a million reasons as to why there was no running backs for a that, lot of it. That's what I'm saying. So like, I'm not I'm not saying that. I don't want to say that they were overused, but they when Kyle has something in his hot and it can't be stopped, he's gonna rock with it. And remember the year before when Debo. Before Christian McCaffrey, when we were in the NFC Championship, who did he stop using? And we couldn't figure out why. And it was Debo Samuel. And Debo Samuel was having that contract year. And so why not use him? And the but then you go back in the NFC Championship game. And then you go back to that Super Bowl game. Why are you not using him against Kansas City? 
And then when you mm-hmm. use him in this particular Super Bowl that just passed, why is he your number one pass option and just not your number one option? Like, it, it, it's so weird. So I don't think he's declining, but the faithful feel like he's declining the, uh, uh, because of the amount of money he's getting paid. They, they feel like he's not living up to that. I don't think any player in the NFL lives up to what their contract is because I always want to have the con- the conversation. Nick Bosa got paid a trillion ducats. I don't think he lived up to anything in at all. And oh. you don't hear any shots at Nothing. Nick Bosa at all. It's Not the most one. crazy thing I've ever heard. You about to get it started on a whole other show, bro. You about to get it started on a whole other show. Well, these shows will re- we de- I, I, listen, we promise that these shows will continue after the draft. I promise. I have a lot we have a lot we want to say, but due to the draft, we want to focus on the 49ers drafting and whatever. But I, you can't t- Nick Ooh, Bosa came a, out a himself, Mike. His, 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 he came out his own mouth, Mike, and said that he didn't live, play up to hit the, the, what he was supposed to do. Like, he said and, it took more than half the season to feel like himself. Okay, so that's what happens when you miss. And every, spin the wheel. Let's get to it. Let's get to you it. get what I'm saying? Okay. I, right, I get right, what you're saying. Another time. Yeah, no, no, but, no, it's not that. I just, I just get what it, you're saying. It's, it's, these, it's these fans that tiptoe around what's really going on, and it, it's, it's crazy. The, I just think that. Just, some people can do certain things and some people can't do certain things and I think it's unfair. My final thing on this is as long as Debo gives me 1k yards a season, I'm cool with whatever he's getting paid. Totally. I don't care if it's by air or by land. It you don't can matter. reach me by caravan. <laughs> Cross the desert like an airman. Come on oh, now. Man. Is don't, that what do you know that about a, that? Is that Offensive? I don't care how you get it is now, yeah. Man, oh, times have changed. God. I'm I'm gonna spin this wheel because yes. you know we always gotta do some random music stuff, but I gotta tell you something, bro. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Uh no disrespect to our Arab brothers and sisters out there, but that was Alita Adams and that song was fire. Braden Willis. All right, man. I'm glad we get wait, to talk about wait. the seventh round pick. Uh oh. So I gotta tell you this. And it's a, this is one of my most embarrassing confessions ever. Wait, Mike, how cool is that his number is 24-7? What you mean? He was picked oh. 247. Oh, I like that. Me- I like that. And he's going to be somebody that's going to be a major player for this team soon. We hope I, so. I, I, I hope so. I hope so. I hope mm-hmm. so. But I get why you're saying it. All right, what were you going to say before we can get off tangent to get back on tangent? So, okay, this is my last music thing. You know the song by Lisa Stansfield? Uh, Been Around the around World. Been Around the World. Yeah. I, I, I. yeah. I, can't I can't find, find my, my baby. baby. Okay. I don't when this know song came I out, don't know why. It was my jam. You know what year that song came out, bro? 1991. Ooh, so cool. 89. That was a good Aw, dang. Good but it, but it sounds like a 90s. Uh, early yes. 90s. It, well, it rolled into the 90s. That song was good for two or three years. Like, that, that song is good for two or three go decades. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. So, did you ever notice that that house, song? I know you don't know this about music without me pointing it out, but that song is out of tune. I don't know if they, I don't know if you know certain songs are in between keys. Oh, now I'm gonna listen to it with like the surround sound on. I have to really pay attention. I don't know if you. I, could, I did not know that. I don't know if you know what that means, but certain songs are pitched. It's not between, on the or me scale. N- or or they detune the song, so instead of changing the key, they change the tuning because all songs are tuned in like 440 hertz, and they changed it down or made it up so it sounds a little bit off the key a little bit. So it's one of those two things. Michael Jackson did that a lot. His songs were between E and F. They were never on one key. You just put it in Which one Which is why them. it sounded so original coming from Mike's voice. That's it. There it is. Mm, that, okay. That's kind of genius. All it's, right. sci- it's science. It's science. So let me let me tell you why I brought this song up. So this song, in my house growing up, you know, at this time, I'm five, six years old, right? I, we don't, we're not allowed to watch music videos. Mm-hmm. Like, it's super, super church. Oh, you're going to talk about the, 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 the coat she had on? I'm not going to talk about the coat. Okay, my bad. I'm going to talk about when I saw her performing at like the Apollo, but I was grown. I did not know that this woman, I hate to say, I didn't know she was white. But. Oh. But. But she's like English white, so that's different. Whatever she is, (laughs) it made the perfect sense in the world after I realized she was white and I saw and listened to the lyrics of this song. Because not for nothing. (laughs) 
I don't think it's no sisters that committed the father and the brother. Good point. Do you do we get that? All right, Brady Willis. When we think about Brady, I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry, but I, I that think, joint, I'm sorry. I think this is a seventh round pick, and <laughs> um, and it's 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 hard to it's hard to grade these picks because these picks mm-hmm. aren't with zero expectations. If you go in the seventh round, your expectations are like literally zero. So I don't know if we can even give it a draft grade, but I can. Okay, so what would I be can. your draft grade? So it's because of the position, right? The position and the value of the position that they're picking in the seventh round. I actually give the pick a B. The Niners knew that they weren't going to be in on, um, uh, not McKivitt, uh, what's Dalton the name? Dalton Kincaid. Uh, Dwelly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant they, the guys that went drafted. No, no, no. I'm talking about Dwelly. Uh, the, the, we're in the phase well, of the 49ers meant- where we're drafting for the following years. We're not drafting for production in 2023 when you're drafted at 247 Agreed. in 23. Agreed. So it's like, all right, we are going to let this player go next year. Ross Dwelly, you're out of here. We're going to let this guy go next year. You're out of here too, right? So they pick up not one, but two tight ends in this draft, right? So I give that a B based off of just that alone. Now, how they end up playing out, and their production is a different grade. But as far as identifying the need for the next year, getting them in here and all that stuff, I give that a B. I think that's a really good pick. So the reason why I don't give it a B if I was going to give it a grade is because they could have addressed the tight end position a lot earlier. And so, like, they chose not to. So when you look at the tight no, that's ends. that's not true. They th- did. It, 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 they, if you want to go Cameron Latou, he was not one of the top tight ends. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they addressed it in the third round with a comp pick, too, by the way. I want to make sure I make that clear. But – I still felt like if they were really looking to move on from a tight end for 2024, they could have literally got one of the better prospects. So let me just let me just remind everybody, like when you're drafting, it's rounds one, two, and three. It's rounds one, two, and three. Everything else, it's not a crapshoot, but whatever you get from it, you get from it. If you hit on it, <laughs> ha ha, win, winner, chicken dinner. If you don't hit on it, oh well, it wasn't a top 100 pick or a top 96 pick, right? And that's how I look at the draft. So, yes, they got Cameron Latou in the third round, all right? And that's fine. But, you know, looking at Braden Willis, I think that the San Francisco 49ers, they definitely got an athletic guy. And the question is, how will they use him? So, if you want to give it a B, matter of fact, you can give all the draft grades for all I care. So, if this is a B, this is a B. Um, as far as production grade, I mean, he was asked to come in and play tight end. Uh, he wasn't asked to come in and do some of the things that he's good at doing, like, you know, lining up in the backfield, splitting out, uh, lining up in the slot, doing little things like that. And so when you look at Brady Didn't Willis. did he have a penalty in the Super Bowl? Uh, I think he did get a penalty in the Super Bowl, yeah. On a play that George Kittle needed a breather or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, this, yeah. is a, this is a rookie. This is a kid that don't get a lot of reps. And and so when you got to come in on the biggest game of your life, you're hoping you hit. Again, it's a seventh-round pick. My expectations from a seventh-round pick opposed to a third-round pick would have been totally different. Had Cameron Latou did that, I would feel some type of way. But because Braden Willis did it, I don't feel some type of way because I'm, I'm not expecting him to comprehend everything. This is literally your not a practice squad tight end, but this is like your tight end. What's that? What they have they have the team the team one, team two, team three. He's their team three guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? And so, like, he's out there with the lesser competition and just trying to get under the ropes. I do believe the ceiling for this kid, though, can be phenomenal. And it all comes down to, like, so I got Braden Willis kind of, you know, if if his frame gets a little bit bigger, he can put on a little bit more weight. You know what I'm saying? A little bit more strength. Man, this kid gives me Jaden Reed vibes. I see what Kyle Shanahan is doing, and Mm. he would give me, did I say his name right? I'm sorry, Jordan Reed. What is his name? you you talk well Jordan Reed is the tight end that we had before that's right? what Did I meant that's what I meant yeah, yeah. Jordan Reed vibes who okay. Kyle brought in but because of mm-hmm. the injuries just never panned out yeah oh wow good callback man I like that. and like I, I like said that. if he could get a big bigger up top you know what I'm saying so like his his top frame um because Jordan Reed wasn't a great blocker Jordan Reed was a great tight end that could get open Jordan Reed was Travis oh, Kelsey man. before there was Travis Kelsey let's just talk Ooh. about it like it is Ooh. like you know what I'm saying and that's who Brandon Willis is. He's a dynamic, athletic guy. It's so funny because I I think that Latu will be the better receiver of the two. But it's interesting. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out, man. It's good. Good. Good analyst there. 
uh, and analysis, I mean. My apologies. All right. <laughs> All right. 2023 wide receiver Ronnie Bell, um, you know, pick 253, San Francisco 49ers. Another seventh round pick. Mike, what would be your draft grade? I'll break it down a little bit. And Yeah. Yeah, draft grade on this one is another B. Another B, yeah. man. The Niners have uh, an influx of wide receivers that they don't know who is going to do what and who's going to contribute where. We know that they don't want to see guys like McLeod on the field for extended time. They want to bring somebody in that has uh, some other return ability, right? And you saw Ronnie Bell get his little hat back there as that, in that as well. But we also saw Ronnie Bell get some snaps on the field in the absence of some of the uh, starters. Uh, so that was a, a nice nod of confidence for the young wide receiver. So uh, without all of that, looking at how – the team is moving and operating in the seventh round. They're drafting for years ahead, not for the current year. Uh, we have a Brandon Ayuk year now in contract negotiations, right? May or may not be here when the season starts. We don't know. Debo may or may not be here the following year. We don't know. Picking up a wide receiver a year early. I, I can't not give it a B. It's a B. It's definitely, you know, like I said, that's why I like when you give your draft grade analysis on based off of the need and where they got in the position and where we get them. So that, I think you hit these spot on as far as production. I mean, you got what you needed from a rookie. I mean, he wasn't utilized, but I mean, the kid scored touchdowns. He got you three touchdowns and they were more, mainly in the red zone. Um, and then after that, you kind of shut him down. And here's what I do know about Ronnie Bell. He will be a dog. Like, he is a dog. So, like, you know, he's got to go through that dog treatment from Kyle Shanahan, especially at the wide receiver position. But here's the thing. If he comes out of that treatment well, he comes out of that doghouse well, he's going to be a refined uh, weapon for Kyle Shanahan. And it's funny that you mentioned it because they had him not mirror Debo Samuel. They had him mirror Brandon Ayuk. So it's going to be interesting to see in year two if you know because don't get it twisted they're going to bring in other wide receivers but it's going to be interesting to see in year two what he's able to do and how he's able to stand out so i think it's a solid pick for the san francisco 49ers i mean all of these like it's it's weird like these seventh round picks i feel like we have more good things to say about these seventh round picks because we've seen actual production from them we've seen them being utilized in in a way or two uh opposed to some of the uh earlier round picks that we've had on this uh show yeah yeah all right, let's keep it moving, man. I won't I won't belabor the moment, man. Shout out to Ronnie Bell. Hopefully we see some growth in the next year. Ha 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 ha. Kyle's likes he likes drafting these wide receivers in the seventh round. Mike, I want you to grade the pick and do not put in your biases about Richie James no, no, Jr. No, no biases at all. Um, I was actually really excited about the prospect. Richie James Jr., to me, was a poor man's Antonio Brown, an undersized, shifty, speedy guy who uh, actually tracked the ball really well coming out of college in the air. I thought that we had Special teams. probably one of the – no, as a receiver. Mm. Richie James as a receiver in college was really good. Mm. I thought we had the steal of the draft. I thought we had a poor man's version of Antonio Brown. I was wrong. So at the time, based off of pure emotions and who the player was, I actually gave this pick an A. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the same year we got Dante Pettis. Is that correct? This is 2018, yes. Yeah, we got Pettis the same draft. And I was telling everybody, yeah, I know Pettis is the return guy, but look out for Richie James. He's going to be that guy. Uh, I was kind of wrong. Richie did get the return response, but he wasn't any good, so. Uh, I gave the pick an A itself. Uh, the Niners clearly needed some help at the wide receiver position uh, that year and going forward. I don't know if y'all remember 17 was a whole add every, everybody uh, that you could possibly add. They rebuilt the entire team. So the following year, they were still in need of pretty much every position because now you got to start creating some depth. I thought Richard James uh, would be a phenomenal depth piece for the 49ers. This Interesting. pick itself was an A. Yeah, okay. Uh, Richie James... He, he did have some good moments with the San Francisco 49ers. I can't say that he was a straight-up bust. I do know he's not here. It was one game he had, like, 10 receptions, 178 yards. I, I remember he, Washington. He had, some, he had some decent moments. I always wondered why Kyle didn't utilize him a certain way. But It was, it now was the I rain start, game against Washington, 
and no, there was a, any receivers out there. There was another game where he balled out, like you know what I mean. Like there was another game where I remember him balling out. It wasn't just that game. Um, but no, all I'm saying is like I I thought he had some promise. He just wasn't good as a return guy. Uh, but he was kind of like what we were hoping we would have got out of uh, uh, Ray Ray McLeod. I felt like they're like the same type of wide receiver, right? You could have oh, used it was Richie. Green Bay. Yeah, you could have used Richie James in the backfield. You could use Richie James. You know, he had the speed to get down the field. I don't think he had those track and ball skills in the NFL, though. That's the funny part. Like he 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 couldn't track the ball well. Um, but hey, yeah, you know he's no longer here. Uh, and I think he got. A, did he win a Super Bowl? He just won a Super Bowl too against us. Go figure, Kansas City Chiefs and, and Vernon Davis. Never mind. All right. Cool. Let's keep it moving, man. Let's keep it moving. Um, here we go. Interesting. You get all the two all the 2023 seventh round selections are done after this. Jalen Graham, what do you grade the pick? Uh, I gave the pick at the time a C. Uh, so the linebacker position was one that I felt like we had a lot of uh, veterans in. Um, I won't go through the Fred and the Green Law, both under contract through last year and this year. Um, but Demetrius Flanagan fouls. Uh, then we, we spent the offseason bringing in um, the special teamers and all that. I just didn't think that this was necessarily a good pick for the 49ers, considering who we had already drafted. But it's also the seventh round. Um, had this same exact type of pick, a position that have happened Earlier in the draft, round four through five, uh, I would have given it an F. But because it was a seventh round and you're kind of just taking flyers, I gave it a C. Interesting. Well, we'll see. Like, I, I like that, you know, Jalen Graham was utilized more as the mic. He, he didn't see any reps um, his rookie season. He was inactive. Um, but he was available. Um, and so I'm curious to see how the 49ers – tend to want to use him moving forward um hopefully he can take that leap get himself on special teams um and and find a way you know to you know to move up the rankings when it comes to the on this depth chart uh but he does have the good ability to tackle i did see he, he did struggle with like you know angles and 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 reacting and things like that like just determining the run between the pass and you know if you're a 49er linebacker you know teams want these linebackers out of that box they want them to be able to cover they will bring out certain you know sets and stuff for the 49ers to have to pick and choose you can cover a tight end you got cover wide receiver like that's that's the danger of playing linebacker for the san francisco 49ers right uh, and so I don't know if he has the athleticism to do those things um, but we'll see what happens um, I think you gave it a good grade you, you gave it a c as far as the draft mm-hmm. grade uh but as far as production i mean it's definitely incomplete yeah yeah for sure all right julian oh man oh man oh man this is a local pennsylvania guy uh i was going crazy when he we drafted him <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I thought the Niners had one here. I wanted to support a local PA guy. Um, this kid had a an injury that he just really couldn't bounce back from. He flashed in preseason. Oh, let me get back to the pick. My grade for the pick was an A. I thought that we needed some more help on the defensive line. He's a strong, physical, nasty guy. Um I, I like the pick. I thought he was uh, a bit undersized. I, I, I feel like the Niners struggle with these daggone – at, well, at least at this time, they struggled with defensive alignment. So, mm-hmm. like, if I was to give it a grade, it would be probably, like, a B, like, straight up draft grade, like, as far – because they just don't – I'm hoping the Niners get it right now. As you see in free agency, they started both beef, beefing up that defensive line with 300-pounders, and they got to be in that 6'2 to 6'4 frame, right? Nothing right. nothing higher than 6'4. I'm hoping the Niners get it right. I thought he was a bit under that size. I thought he was under 290. At the time, I could be wrong, but that's what I thought. But um, you're right. The injury is what set him back. The injury is why we couldn't see him take off, you know, and then we had to result in use guys like Katavia Street who struggled and things like that. So you're right. I Like, I agree with you. You know, and my bias is screaming, by the way, like absolutely screaming because, like I said, the local guy. And he was 305, 6'5", 305. But he was, he's from Philly. So that's why I was going so hard for this kid. I, I was really, really proud of him. 
uh, at the time of the draft. But, you know, it is what it is. But like you um, said, like those those injuries, man, like, you know, because it, it affects mm-hmm. your get off uh, on that on that defensive line. And he could just never get off. He, he, he never could get right. Is, is he still in the league? I'm not sure. I don't think so. He's only 29. Uh, he was released from the Vikings August 30th of 22. So it's been a while since he's played. Wow. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This might be the top dog of the draft right here, man. Like, well, you know. What's funny is we got to grade the pick. I hated it. <laughs> so, so I hated get, it. it's funny that you hated it, and I didn't hate it because I thought we needed to add a wide receiver, and we got one in the seventh round, right? Like, so um, I didn't know who that wide receiver needed to be, but I thought we needed to address the position. So, for me, the pick is a B. So, for your same exact reason as to why you like the pick, it was why I didn't like it. I felt like we should have addressed it earlier. Like, and, and I agree, but we yeah. still addressed it. You know what I right. mean? Like same way you gave it. Th- Never mind. You right. No, no, no. I, I completely, I, I, I completely understand it. We have the same exact reason for our grades. You're like, we need a wide receiver. We should get a wide receiver. We got one. Cool. You addressed it. My thing was, why you wait all the way to the end? That's to how get I was one, feeling about the. And tight now ends. you're giving me scrap heaps. Right. Right. But now did you're we get me guys I, off the scrap? I, heaps. I believe we got another wide receiver in 2020. Uh, 2020. Let me check. Um, we did. We did. 2020. Uh, that was an Ayuk. That was Brandon Ayuk year, wasn't it? Oh, it was Ayuk. It was Ayuk. I think so, it was Ayuk. So, so Mike, technically, we got the. No, but we 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 needed more than one, bro. I know we, we did. We, we got more than we one. We needed another. Nah, one. don't we try wanted... to don't try. We did get another one. We got Brandon Ayuk, and then we got Jawad Jennings. It's Shut the same, up, man. You know what the, I'm saying? I'm saying we needed one argument. earlier. It's the same <laughs> argument with Cameron Latu and Brandon Willis, bro. It is. It is. That's fair. That's fair. All right, and you got me. You listen, got me. Jawad, so let's I, set him on a B. I get a B. I'm with. I'm with. I'm with it for the B. Uh, they got two wide receivers, so the first one would be an A. This would have been a B, so A B, right? A B testing. I like how they did it. Ooh, um, a B. You uh, know what that is? Um, audio it's broadcast. Brandon Ayuk backwards. Ah, B A. Ah, I like that. All right, so I like what they did um, in drafting this kid, and they had got a dog. And I remember I was I was happy because we had got a wide receiver with size. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm tired of the little ones. Like no point, yeah. no, no, no. You know, pause, but. We had got a wide receiver with some size, girth, some strength. Like, like <laughs> you could pause. Say girth. Just it's pause. cool. Uh, but I remember I was I was psyched about his height. Yeah, I was six not four. excited about his speed, and that's, I didn't that's care, what I didn't, I, like I we kid, never I, get the combination. Why won't we do size because and it's, speed? It's almost the impossible. Niners won't ever do it. So name another six four. He was four seven, right? Like I think he ran a four seven. He was slow. He ran a slow. No, he did, but <laughs> these taller guys are going to run slower 40s, Mike. It's just the way they, they legs are set up. Nah, bro. There's plenty. I, I can, you if can't. I pull up my you, list right I now. I guarantee you, you can't. I guarantee you. I can tell you the wide Stop receivers it. in this 2000. The wide receivers in 2024 draft are more athletic. They're they're just they're just built better than the wide receivers that came out in 2020. I can tell you that right now. Just because of football Wayne, advancements and fair. everything. Let me that's just say. I can, me, I can tell you some guys that are let supposed me, to go let, last. Let, let me just say. Let me just finish. Look up, look at, look up Keon Coleman. Look up Johnny Wilson. These are your taller wide receivers. They like six four, six seven. Okay, these are your taller guys, right? They not running four. They Keon I think ran a four five, and Johnny ran a four seven. You got four seven out of a six four guy. Look, I, I just think getting out of the break, he ain't that dude. Like he don't have the quick acceleration. Do you understand what I'm saying? You ever played with record breakers? Do you know how slow four seven is, Wayne? I sl- Mike, I, I bet you you run a five seven. But let me just say, let me just say this. <laughs> See, that's that that wasn't even cool. I don't <laughs> even like what you just did to me, right? <laughs> that was that was so unnecessary. <laughs> that was necessary you reference not, right there. You uh, D- Devon Veal from Utah. You don't know who that is. He's gonna go undrafted in this draft. He's six four and ran a four four, bro. Mike, this kid had a decent career at Tennessee. The kid from Utah, you don't know who he is. Like you do definitely I don't you don't know who he is. You just looked the Jalen Coker. I like Jalen Coker. What did Jalen Coker run? 
from Holy Cross. You 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 know who that is? Yeah, I think he's a great six wide three receiver. four five. Okay, yeah, but he's six. I mean, look, you, four five. That that's average. That's not four seven. They're different. That's not four seven. And he's not six four. <laughs> they're, they're different. All right. So we settled Spindle. on the pick B and a B. What about the production? Production also a B, right? I think the production is maybe a, a high. I think the production is an A. A, yeah. Like I, I would say A minus for Jawan Jennings. I mean, when his yeah. number is called on, I re- who mm-hmm. I, I remember uh, Mose hating Jawan Jennings said he couldn't catch, uh, and it's funny. Well, I, look, it's funny. First, second down, he would struggle, but on third down, this dude mm. literally he literally repla- replaced Kendrick Bourne, like literally, mm-hmm. like just a different body frame. And Kendrick Bourne was dumbass slow too. It's funny, right? <laughs> Why you had a what you see like you spin throwing unnecessary sh- okay all right spin the, wheel, bro. spin the wheel we just gonna spin that was a, you just going throw shots at my man KB this one gonna land on Brock Purdy. this one gonna land on AJ Cole you gonna save Brock for that here comes all my bias A plus on the pick. <laughs> 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 Niners need a safety. Adrian Colbert is somebody to this day I he still was a, text and communicate with. He is a cool here. guy. Um, I, I sent a, him gifts for his his first baby. Like I, he's a, he's a good guy. This is a good guy. Uh, speed a speed guy. But I hated seeing that report because it wasn't official. It was some hand time four threes type stuff. Um, and we needed a safety at the time. I'm giving it an A because of pure bias. If I take my bias out, it's probably like a, a C minus or a D. I felt like Adrian Colbert suffered from the changing of the guard in the NFL when it came to the safety position. Yeah, I thought Adrian Colbert was pretty good at locating the runner, finding the ball, and laying a hit. I mean, he wasn't Deshaun Golson. He wasn't those type of hitters, but he was there around the ball. Like, he wasn't your ball hawking safety. He was more of a box guy. I thought he was pretty, pretty, you know, spot on. But remember, they were changing up the way you would tackle, how you had to hit. Like, things were just changing for Adrian. And for some reason, like, I thought his rookie season, he wore two numbers for the Niners. I thought his rookie season, I thought he was promising. Didn't he wear 38? Because I think I used to call him 38 special. He was promising for the 49ers. He did. And then he went from 38 to 27. And then when he switched to 27, it just changed, man. Like, like, I don't know if his role changed. I don't know if his assignments changed. I'm sure his athletic ability didn't change, but something happened and he didn't do too well. So, like, production, C for me, straight up C. Draft grade, just, B. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. They just hit my house. I'm sorry. The guys are doing my, my landscapers are here and they just hit my house on a riding mower. Like, I just heard him hit my house. Ouch. My dog is looking like, what's that? What's coming through? The, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it's funny, man. We saved the best for last, and it was completely unintentional. Like, we didn't do this. Nah, it We did didn't that. do this. And this is the last pick of the draft. This is literally the Mr. Irrelevant, and he happens to be the last pick. Oh. So listen, man. All bias coming here. This is an A plus pick, and it's not because of, I'm only talking about the draft. Oh no, it's an A plus. If you if you if you draft a quarterback in the seventh round, and it hits, it's an A plus. I think if you draft a quarterback, period, it should be an A. Well, hear I didn't out. think that it, the not, well. It, let, let, here, I, I'm gonna do want to hear you out. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Here, yeah, I was say, hear me out. We knew that they were trying to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo, so that means that we just had Trey Lance here, and then anybody else was someone off the street. I wasn't interested in that. I want the Niners to continue to draft. There's one thing that the Packers do that I wish the Niners would adopt. The Packers will draft the quarterback at least every other year. At least every other year the Packers are drafting a quarterback. Guy might not work out. Guy might be a backup for the next three or four years. We don't know. Jordan Love is a product of them drafting a quarterback every year. He was a first-round pick. Right, just get him in here, let him learn our system, and let him be our consistent and constant backup. I love the idea of that, and I want the Niners to adopt that. We got Brock Purdy. He's a starter. Cool. That does not mean we should stop drafting quarterbacks. It doesn't. And so I love the pick, and this is with me thinking Trey Lance was the guy. This is with me thinking we're moving on from Jimmy. I still love the pick. I was like, yeah, he's probably not going to do anything, 
But just grading the pick itself, it's got to be an A. It's got to be. Enough of the scrap heap. I don't. I don't want the leftovers from everybody else. Everybody we've. Seen I mean, fail. it's the last pick. Technically, he was the leftovers at the at like the end of the end of the no, day. No, no, like, no, no. I'm talking about from other roster. I'm sorry. I'm talking about free agents. I, I don't want to see old guys come here. I don't want to see the Josh Johnsons come in here. I don't want to see the Ryan Fitzpatrick's past their primes because Ryan Fitzpatrick would have given Brock Purdy a run for his money for that starting <clears> role <throat> once the other two guys went down. I don't want that. I, I, that's not what I wanted to see. I'm talking about scrap heap from other rosters and veterans and free uh-huh. agents. Don't, I don't. I don't want that kind of stuff. Well, everything. He's just a solid. It's, this. This is just a solid A across the board. I mean, he lived. He like I said, zero expectations. And in my opinion, he's whatever the hype is. He's lived up to it. And so Brock Purdy has surpassed just about <laughs> every quarterback that's been a 49er except for Steve Young and Joe Montana like at the end of the day like how can that not be an A is is Brock Purdy's career today better than that of Colin Kaepernick to, uh, come on now wait, I don't, wait, I don't wait. know let me, that's, let, me, that's, let me rephrase that's, it wait let me rephrase it first two years of Colin Kaepernick first two years of Brock Purdy which was more exciting to you same results in both guys NFC Championship Super Bowl appearance the results were the same but the way they went by were different so they, they to me it was equal like I didn't I didn't Colin Kaepernick was a, was an electric spark that we haven't seen in decades as a San Francisco 49er and so when he came in his ability to be able to run and throw the ball deep down the field we, we weren't seeing that like we literally weren't seeing that a lot of people felt like Colin Kaepernick was this highly inaccurate quarterback that's bull crap like this Not dude a, used to hit the ball. I mean, get the ball down the field like 70, 80 yards. Like, like this dude had a cannon. <laughs> now, it was fast all the time. He had zero velocity on the mother trucker. But That happened in year three. It fucked, they messed my man up. I'm I sorry. think they changed him up mentally and yeah, what they were asking him to do. They, they wanted touch passes. They wanted play. They wanted this. They wanted that. Nah, like, and so anyway, that's a whole other conversation. But I think they, I think they mm-hmm. equally have done, but I think Brock Purdy has surpassed him. Um not from the accolades that he's done, but just the consistency, right? And so we haven't even seen the element of Brock being able to run. We've seen some 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 highlights. Some scrambles. Some yeah. <laughs> like like yep. mm-hmm. if they if they if they add a zone read option to the 49ers offense, Kyle Shanahan is going to go ham and cheddar, bro. Or ham and Swiss, ham and gouda, ham and cheese. All of them are Ooh. cheeses. Like you know Ooh. what I mean? And it doesn't have to be heavily used. It's just Brock Purdy has proven two things. One, he has the athleticism. And two, he has the durability. So, like, when you look at Brock, why didn't we win that Super Bowl? Well, you could say the Chiefs took away his athleticism or Kyle chose not to use his athleticism. However way you want to look at it. I'm sorry. You just hit me with the Stevie, oh, my God, too. because you just No, because after he did all that running – in, in Detroit, the, in the and Lions Green Bay, game, I know. I, I knew there was no fucking way we were going to lose that game. I said that guy won't be denied, and neither will Christian. I don't want to have this conversation. Not on this episode. Okay. All right. All right. Fine. I'm sorry. We're going to wrap it up, man. I, we we hope you guys enjoyed this episode, Wayne. This was a lot of fun. I think the Niners actually do okay in the seventh round. Now I that think we went through this all. The seventh round might be the heaven round. I think. I think this is the round that the Niners take. The, they do their homework, and then they shoot their shot. Yes. We've got nothing to lose. Because the expectations are so low. What a great movie. Come oh, uh, you don't what you Oh, don't get me started. Don't get me started on nothing to lose, man. One of my top Martin movies ever. I won't I won't go into it no more, but that's good. All right, listen, we're gonna get out of here. So either Martin is that short or both. <laughs> it's both. It's both. <laughs> and Tim Robbins play they they played that role, but their roles so Perfect. well. Perfectly. The scene where Martin is up on the edge of the balcony in uh-huh. the seat, and Tim Roberts is like, I just gotta, if I time it, uh-huh. I can get. He's like, No, no, don't touch it, don't touch it. <laughs> Bro, that scene right there encompassed the whole movie. It's one guy trying to calculate everything, it's another guy with, This is not gonna work ever. <laughs> Sound like and two people worked, I know. <laughs> it worked, but it didn't work, but nope, it was good. But, but it was good. <laughs> it's the BAM show, man. We out of here, y'all. We hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Let me put my fist up there with Wayne's. Peace.